Good afternoon. So today I wanted to talk about uh, service performance as a measure of uh, KPI. So essentially, if, uh, if we're looking at it from a perspective of a freight broker, we want to make sure that our carriers have a certain standard to be upheld to in order to provide capacity to our carriers, excuse me, to our shippers. So with that being said, you want to have your uh, targets and your actual results from the shipments that are run through your systems, through your TMS or TRMS. Um, with that being said, one of the main KPIs you look at is service performance of your carrier. Now this service performance can come in uh, many subcategories. One of them is on-time pickup and delivery and the rate at which it happens. You would have your target rate, monthly or annually, however you want to look at it, or even daily for some, um, and your actual results from on-time pickup and delivery rate. Uh, another thing would be the delivery on time and full in terms of to the dock for delivery and completion of the load. You want to have your target and you want to have your actual. Another one would be the load acceptance and rejection rate of your carrier. Now the load acceptance and rejection rate of your carrier may be one of uh, the underlying factors um, for your partnership with that carrier. So if they're always rejecting, always rejecting, always rejecting, you might want to reach out to some different partners that may be able to handle certain lanes for you where the acceptance to rejection rate is lower. In other words, acceptance is higher and rejection is lower. Uh, another thing that you look at also is the transit time to the final destination for the freight. Uh, as well as the length of time between the tender sending and the scheduling of the dispatch or the pickup. Um, as well as um, the carrier rate, specifically by lane, you can have a target rate and the actual rate you're paying uh, spread out throughout your KPI for your carriers. Another thing you can look at as well is the routing guide compliance. If you're, you know, if you're looking at specific routing guides, you want to see how compliant your carriers are in, in, in carrying out this business. Another thing you want to look at is as well as uh, the invoicing percentage to see the rate at which invoices are sent in terms of delay. Is there delays in there or is there not? You want to have target you know, for example, you know, send bill of lading within 48 hours or send it within the same week or whatever your model, your business model is, you want to make sure your carriers are upheld to those standards. So that way um, you can cut down on the time it takes for the invoicing cycle to be completed for any given load. Um, another thing you want to look at is the average loading and unloading times. This could very well be um, a good performance indicator for you for your carriers um, specifically for you as the broker uh, another thing you can look at is the claims what percentage of the of the cost or what percentage of the lanes that you're running have claims and at what rates these claims are at for the specific claims per specific carrier and this could all be broken down again having a target and having an actual uh, quantitative measure of how the carrier is performing. Um, and in addition to all of this, if you include all of this into one entire score, you can have a deduction system that gives you the quality of service score for your specific carrier that you have selected for a lane. So with that being said, you can have a point deduction system where you're deducting points from a carrier score based on the communication, based on the service provided, or uh, the accuracy of the service provided, based on the rate, based on uh, even the lane per se, based on the acceptance and rejection of the, of the lanes, based on the on-time pickup and delivery, and uh, essentially based on the transit times to distant to the destination. So with all of those factors, you can have a score where you spread it out. So, you know, carriers that are between 95 and 100 percent 
performance or quality mm -hmm. will be the carriers that you might prefer on certain lanes or prefer overall on all of your lanes while carriers that are scoring in the 85 to 94 range you would be looking at them as a secondary option for your lanes and then again anything below 85 percent you would you might think twice in terms of awarding freight either spot or dedicated to a certain carrier based on these service performance scores or overall quality of service um, scores so that would be the one the first one for the kpi in terms of carrier management and that would be the service performance category for the kpi and logistics and transportation so i hope you like this and i hope you got something out of this and if you've learned something give it a thumbs up if you didn't learn anything give it a thumbs down if you like it share it if you don't don't care about it and that is about it so cheers again for me and uh, stay tuned for the second and third categories for the kpi when available Cheers again.